Today, I'm testing Kittle's new vector tools alongside two other design software from a print designer's perspective to see if they're ready for real DTF and merch workflows. To start the design process, let's find the right font. Kittle offers a wide range, vintage, bold, modern script, so it's easy to match the style you need. For this one, I chose Mingu West using Kittle's live font browser. It's fast, visual, and great for previewing styles in real time. And the best part, you can bookmark any font you like for quick access later. Once the font's locked in, just right click and select outline text. Now you can double click any letter to edit the shape directly. No need to export and re-import. Everything happens live right inside Kittle. After outlining the text, just double click any letter to access the nodes. You can add new nodes by double clicking along the path. This gives you more control over shaping your design. And if a node creates a sharp corner, just double click it again to convert it into a smooth curve point. From there, you can stretch the letter forms, adjust curves, and pull out extensions to distort the text. This is perfect if you want your type to really stand out with a stylized, handcrafted look, something that feels less like a standard font and more like a custom illustration. It adds personality and originality to your design, which is great for eye-catching prints or artistic layouts. With Kittle's new feature, you can now create your own custom vector shapes. I use the pen tool to draw extra drip elements and then merge them with the letters using the Shape Builder tool. Since we're aiming for originality, this tool is perfect if you have your own custom sketches or ideas you wanna turn into vectors, you can trace them directly using the pen tool. Just a quick note, Kittle's pen tool has a fixed stroke width, meaning you can't adjust the thickness of lines like in other design tools. That's why, instead of relying on strokes, I draw closed shapes to control the style and thickness manually. This gives me more flexibility over the final look. Once you're happy with the design, clean it up and export as an SVG, ready for DTF or screen printing. Now let's see how the design looks on real merch. Kittle has a built-in mock-up feature, so I tested the dripped design across different items to see how it holds up. I tested the design on a hoodie, t-shirt, tote bag, cap, and sticker sheet. Each mock-up helped refine the placement and scale, making sure the design stayed bold and balanced across different items. It proved to be versatile and print ready, whether for apparel, accessories, or merch. If you don't have Kittle, you can use Inkscape. It's a free open source vector tool that works on all major platforms and is perfect for creating print ready designs. We'll follow the same steps as before, but this time in Inkscape. I'm still using the Mingu West font. Just install it on your computer and Inkscape will automatically detect it in the text tool so you can get started right away. Once your text is ready, go to Path, Object to Path to convert it into editable vector shapes. If your text contains multiple letters, go to Path, then split Path to separate each letter, making them individually editable then use the node tool or press N to select a letter and start customizing its shape. You can move, add, or delete anchor points and double click along the path to insert new nodes for more detailed control. This gives you the flexibility to reshape your letter forms, whether you're stretching parts of the text, refining the curves for smoother transitions, or adjusting individual segments to create a more dynamic and custom look. Just like creating custom shapes, you can use the pen tool for this as well. After creating your shapes and text, select them, go to path and choose union. 
This will combine the shapes with the text, merging them into a single vector shape. For custom sketches, Inkscape has a feature called Custom Stroke Width that makes your lines look more natural, almost like they were made with a brush. To do this, use the pen tool, then go to the shape option in the top menu and select ellipse. Make sure to adjust the scale settings so the stroke fits your design style. This is one of Inkscape's best features for giving your vector lines a more organic hand-drawn feel. To finish the process and save your design, select all the elements you have created, go to File then Export at the lower right of the screen, choose Inkscape SVG or Plain SVG as the file type, select your desired location, and then click Export. Kittle and Inkscape can get the job done, but they often take more time and effort. Adobe Illustrator, on the other hand, offers advanced tools that make creating complex designs faster and more efficient. I'm still using Minguest, and once installed, Illustrator will auto-detect it in the character panel. It makes font selection and adjustments to size, spacing, and more quick and easy. To convert your text to vector in Illustrator, go to Object, then Expand. Make sure both Object and Fill are checked, then click OK. Since the text has multiple letters, you can ungroup them by going to Object, then Ungroup. Now each letter is separated, making it easier to edit individual elements of your design. Unlike earlier software where you often have to adjust each node manually, Illustrator offers tools like the Pencil Tool and Smooth Tool to easily draw or refine paths. You can quickly adjust curves, corners, and anchor points with more control, making the editing process much more efficient. Illustrator also uses the pen tool for creating custom shapes, but with more flexibility and control. To combine these custom shapes, go to Window and select Pathfinder. Under Shape Modes, click the Unite icon. This will merge all selected shapes into one clean vector object. For custom sketches, Illustrator provides powerful tools that make vectorizing feel more natural. Start with the pen tool to draw your shapes or lines, then use the width tool to adjust the stroke thickness. By clicking and dragging on any part of the path, you can create dynamic brush-like strokes that mimic hand-drawn sketches while keeping the design fully editable and scalable as vectors. To export your design in Illustrator, go to File, then Export. Then Export as, choose SVG, set the name and location and click Export. Adjust the SVG options if needed, then click OK to save. Each tool has its own strengths, whether you're a pro, on a budget, or just need something quick and easy. It really comes down to your workflow and how deep you wanna go with vector editing. Let me know in the comments which one you use, or if there's another tool you want me to check out, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new tip. Want more? Click the link and unlock something awesome. Visit us at transfersuperstars.com and I'll see you in the next tutorial.